This is a heat-treated Edwards shirt. My first channel flake terminated close. My second channel flake uh, uh, took off the distal end. But uh, there's still enough length of this uh, preform where I can shape into a point. And it falls well within the uh, minimum range of uh, thickness. Some people speculate that uh, the uh, Folsom people were uh, uh, quite nomadic, so they had to lighten their uh, toolkit. And also, I think uh, some of it was uh, probably uh, like uh, boasting on their skill. It was a cultural expression of sorts. Because uh, removing a channel like uh, this size is uh, well beyond what is uh, really needed to make a point functional. Here's a point uh, preform I made from a um, uh, cat head shirt. The first uh, channel flake uh, hinge sh short, second one quite, went quite a ways. And again, all you need is to do now is trim it into, into a, a tip. Here's the uh, preform that I uh, drew of uh, quite a sizable channel flake from. It uh, terminated in the yellow, uh, like a, a hinge. It's, uh, I, the width is close to about 20 uh, millimeters wide. But in the process of removing the second uh, channel flake, I uh, removed part, uh, part of the end, the ear portion. And again, uh, this kind of uh, point uh, preform can be uh, retouched into a usable point. On this one, I took a, a first channel flake uh, hinge short, but second, uh, well, hinge pretty good. The second uh, channel flake hinge short. On this one, the first channel flake uh, hinged, uh, but uh, the second uh, channel flake took off the uh, distal end of the preform. Uh, and you still have enough uh, length on this uh, to make a point of. Not all uh, Fulton points were uh, fluted. It's a very um, risky process. Uh, sometimes uh, you find Fulton points with only one side fluted. And sometimes when you're at sites uh, that are far from a good source of uh, stone material, uh, like uh, the Midland site in southwestern uh, uh, Texas, where you have uh, just poor quality material, the Folsom people did not uh, flew uh, just a few of their points. Uh, the rest were just uh, thinned down by pressure. When you get up into the Canadian Plains, uh, our quality of um, raw material is very poor. So uh, you notice the uh, a reduction in the quality of uh, the uh, points. We have uh, some uh, basically thin points from a site just west of Calgary at Civil Creek. And uh, these are made on our local court site and uh, uh, chert, black chert. And the points are just uh, stubby little points. So you have to adapt your technology relative to the, the uh, quality of the uh, local stone. I'll try and remove the uh, channel flake. The uh, tools I have are deer antler. Uh, I prefer elk antler because they have the right uh, curvature and density. And also uh, on elk antlers, if they're fresh, they have um, a more, a harder tip. Because once you start wearing back the tip, uh, the uh, antler is softer. The technique is quite similar to uh, that of microblade production. Uh, something happened. Oh, I, I just drew off a small channel flake. And uh, I shouldn't uh, panic because uh, there's still enough thickness in this uh, preform where I can come uh, either work uh, 
uh, back and come for down the middle or else I can go along one of the uh, lateral edges. Uh, most of the um, uh, pressure flakers that I use for channel flake and, or end basal thinning in general are curved. So when I press, uh, the force goes into the preform and also along the length of it. So this way you get a, a flat, a fairly flat flick uh, taking off. And uh, here's a good example. And uh, as uh, uh, in this case, uh, when, I, when I removed uh, the channel flake from here, I just used a uh, short piece of uh, antler about uh, this size and uh, just applied as much pressure as I could and uh, I was quite amazed. <laughs> This uh, preform is uh, it's, uh, from obsidian, and it has a concavity here. From I tried to uh, rough it out, and uh, this is where a, uh, a percussion flake terminated. But it does have two ridges. I'll try and remove a channel flake down the center, and if, uh, or actually along this uh, ridge, which is, uh, if you can see it, uh, I prepared the uh, striking platform, which is. Uh, much like that uh, as you would prepare for a baton uh, percussion. Like it's uh, ground. Ooh, I apply, see, uh, this is what I figured would happen. The force traveled down uh, this central ridge, and it also took off the distal end of the uh, preform. It's a quite a common uh, uh, type of fracture. And the size of the channel flake uh, is relative to the, to the size of your pressure flakers. this one. Then I'll strike off the sharp projection because it'll have to be removed anyways. What I'll do is try and see if I can remove a channel flake with a smaller I'm going to remove a shorter channel flake. No. No, it's not. It's not. I didn't prepare the angle right. It's failed on me. I should have had a more If I was a, a napper, I would probably toss this piece away yeah, because it's not cooperating with me and I'll go uh, on to another one. Uh, but if I was far from a, a source of obsidian, I would keep this and work it back. Look 
to the size of this brute. Uh, it took up the distal end of the preform. The flake, channel flake is about two centimeters wide, much wider than uh, and bigger than the fulsum. It's similar to that you see on Cumberland points. So now I have a very good flute and what's required now is to, for me to uh, thin the uh, other side of the point and uh, repeat the process and hope that uh, the, uh, I get a uh, similar channel flake removed.